Hello, my dear friends! My name is Irene and I'm glad to share the latest official HMB news and insights with you, my beloved HMB community. Amid a second wave is spurring increased restrictions across the globe, we are concerned about the effect more lockdowns could have on the HMB athletes' trainings and national team preparations. Seems each country for the moment is searching for its own approach to the current situation and adjusting restricting measures, which makes long-term planning completely impossible. Impossible? Poor thing! Do you want me to tell you about the Black Death? That was a form of bubonic plague, which is spread over Europe in the 1300s. <sighs> But, in any situation, there is clearly a need to plan ahead. So, as you might guess, this time I'd like to share with you the HMBA plans and ideas on the HMB sport development that were announced and discussed at the annual General Assembly that was held online for the first time in the history of the Association. Ready to learn more? Taking into account various factors, including different time zones, possible technical and online platform access issues, it was decided to allow General Assembly 2020 participants an opportunity to familiarize themselves with the reports recorded and uploaded in advance. All participants to the HMBA General Assembly 2020 were invited and registered beforehand. 138 participants from 42 countries got access to the folder with the reports starting November the 1st. And this brought another aspect of this year's General Assembly uniqueness. As apart from listening to the video reports, the participants additionally could study all presentations, tables, current versions of rules and regulations that were presented by the head of the Marshals Committee. 77 attendees from 31 countries managed to join the live question and answer session that was also recorded and uploaded later in the GA folder, so all national federations' representatives who somehow missed the live session could watch it before the voting for the adoption of the HMBA General Assembly 2020 summary record. The voting link was sent personally to the representatives with the confirmed right to vote. So, in general, the whole process and concept of the General Assembly was reformatted and adjusted to the world reality. The live session on November 7 started with the greeting speeches of the HMBA President Edward M. and the HMBA Vice President Gavin Stewart. Also, the information about the HMB Sport Global Development was presented. Let's have a look at some interesting and impressive numbers. So, more than 4,200 athletes over 18 practice HMB around the world. We have 226 HMB 5 vs 5 teams with 189 registered in Buhot League. Number of countries involved in the HMB sport development reached 41. We have 108 certified HMBA marshals and 7 night marshals who are constantly participating in the education seminars aimed to improve their skills. 14 authenticity officers and 10 trainees who have not an easy task to bring athletes' kids in line with the highest level of safety and authenticity at the tournaments. Because if you do not give authenticity issues due priority, the historical medieval battle will neither be historical nor medieval. Despite the fact this year was challenging and came to the absence of big tournaments and events, the committee focused on some specific needs of the HMBA such as creation of educational and certification program for HMB tournament secretaries, creation of knowledge base for tournament organizers, for example, tournament brackets, schedule recommendations, timings, guidelines. These educational programs will be proposed later as online courses. Also, the new dual league rating system is being tested. The dual league project is still ongoing and the rating system may change significantly in future. Of course, the work of the committee will be focused on the Battle of the Nations preparation. Let's have a look at the list of categories announced by the head of the tournament committee, Ivan Karyagin. 
Battle of the Nations 2021 Dual Categories Long Sword Dual Category – Male and Female Sword and Shield Dual Category – Male and Female Sword and Buckler Dual Category – Male and Female Triathlon Dual Category Pole Arm Category – Male and Female Outruns Combat Category – Male and Female each national team can put one male and one female fighter into each of the categories. One fighter cannot register to multiple dual categories in Longsword, Sword and Shield, Sword and Buckler. First three places from each of these categories will be invited to participate in the triathlon dual category. Battle of the Nations 2021 5 vs 5 Group Battle Category Divisions Check your national team division in the right column of the picture Nations in Gold Division can register up to three teams to participate in 5 vs 5 category. Nations in Silver Division can register up to two teams to participate in 5 vs 5 category. Nations in Bronze Division can register one team to participate in 5 vs 5 category. Nations that haven't participated in 5 vs 5 category with their own team start from Bronze Division. Battle of the Nations 2021 12 vs 12 Group Battle Category Number of 12 vs 12 teams for the category that national team can register is 1. Maximum number of fighters for 12 vs 12 team is 20. Keep in mind that 12 vs 12 team must consist only of national team fighters. No mercenaries are allowed. Battle of the Nations 2021 30 vs 30 mass battle category Number of 30 vs 30 teams for the category that national team can register is 1. Maximum number of fighters for 30 vs 30 team is 50. 30 vs 30 team may have legionaries included, but still participates under national flag. Non-neutral teams are allowed. Battle of the Nations 2021 Non-Official and Experimental Categories Full plate harness category with four subcategories such as two-handed sword, sword and dagger, polex, and bataille de lion. Women all versus all, men 150 versus 150. The draw for Battle of the Nations 2021 is preliminary scheduled for the 5th of June 2021. The registration will be completely closed on the 20th of May. 2021. No changes or additions are allowed in the national team registration forms after the registration closure. Please inform the organization team about any changes or withdrawals in your national team as soon as, as you get confirmed information. Respect other participants, provide accurate information and make it on time. At the General Assembly, Milica Kovacevic, the head of the Authenticity Committee, explained more about the new Authenticity Committee structure and goals. The main advisory body of the AC is Council. It consists of the head of the AC, senior officers and observers from the HMBA office, the Presidium and Advisory Board. The Council's main goal is to create documents, rules and regulations and recommendations regarding the HMB equipment. The committee is made out of officers who work as multitask teams formed by the AC Council. In order to have more positive outcome regarding historical accuracy, the AC expanded reach by making previously closed group in Facebook of AC national representatives open to AC members, AC national representative members, marshals, national team captains, Buhut league captains, where questions regarding equipment can be asked and discussed. The presence of the Authenticity Committee officers is obligatory at HMB events starting from 2021 season, since a great amount of the 2020 tournaments were cancelled. The idea of making live streams on specific topics with the representatives of the AC as a way of improving communication between the committee and fighters, where you can directly ask questions about topics, especially after publishing your documents, was strongly supported and Militza promised to continue such online meetings in the future. This year, new rules and regulations regarding gauntlets, griefs, belt numbers, 
Armor and Weapons Finish and Decorations were already published. By the end of this year, it is planned to publish two more documents for Quiz and Fibers Textile and Leather using HMB. It was decided to move publication of knee protection announced for this year for 2021. Three quarter leg protection, band brace, fold and eastern kit documents are the new projects that AC is working on for next year publishing. The effect of the pandemic on the world and ourselves makes sustainability and dedication to our movement hard, especially with the new documents which implementation should have started from 2021. As one of the most problematic topics, the new countless rule document implementation dates will be moved for one year further where the first restrictions regarding gauntlets start from the 2022 Prime and Masters events and 2023 Battle of the Nations, except for fantasy gauntlets and sport feast, which decline starts from Battle of the Nations 2021. For the moment, the total number of marshals reached 108 people from 28 countries, with ongoing restrictions and lockdowns, it was still necessary to continue educating trainees and working on the current marshals' knowledge upgrade. Offline and online seminars were organized for marshals of Russia, Mexico, Argentina, Brazil, Spain, Australia, New Zealand, China, and the USA. Creation of a system of regular distance learning to improve the qualifications of marshals was one of the goals to achieve as well. The new edition of the UDEX application will be useful not only for trainees willing to pass the test and get an international certificate, but for all HMB fighters. One of the most important things is the changes in the dual categories that focus on the counting system of the strikes. Pay attention to the crucial changes of the scoring system in the sword and shield dual category that will definitely impact the way of fights. The full plate harness category that was presented in Serbia as an additional tournament activity will be included in the program of the Battle of the Nation 2021 as an experimental category. Set of new rules and regulations for full plate harness, including two handed sword, sword and dagger, polex, bataille de Lyon categories, was prepared by the Marshals Committee. All current versions of documents you can find on the official HMBA website in the Rules and Regulations section. The paramount of each Buhurt League season is the Buhurt Prime Tournament that took place on the 15th of February in Monaco. The strongest 10 teams from all over the world got their invitations to this remarkable event. Here are just a few features of this outstanding event. Buhut Prime 2020 had an unprecedented attention of local public and media. It was honored by a visit of His Serene Highness Prince Albert II and set a completely new level for the organization of HMB tournaments. In 2020, Buhut League also organized a special season awards ceremony on the 14th February in Monaco, just before the Buhut Prime tournament. The major decision which was taken in response to quarantine measures and international lockdowns was to put the World League season on pause. About 65% of tournaments were cancelled. It was decided to extend the World League season with the final tournament Buhurt Prime planned for February 2022. All current rating points and standings will be saved and transferred to the prolonged season. To mark the progress and efforts of the teams from current standings, Buhurt League will send intermediate season awards to the teams that hold top 10 positions at the current rating. HMB Academy focuses all the efforts on testing the concept within one country at the start. And based on the experiments, in one of the most developed HMB sport communities in Russia, it will be possible to analyze the weak points of the system and work on its further globalization. Of course, this difficult year has had a major impact on the previously created plans of the development. But on the other hand, it was possible to force to adjust some of the ideas on a local level, focusing on the inner ranking system. 
working with trainers and academy managers, and improving the system of tournaments for novice fighters. For the moment, there are 19 affiliated centers in Russia, and 373 fighters in total joined the training process in the HMB academies. About 30% of the total number are novice fighters who just came to the sport and started training in the academies. And 8% of the novice athletes managed to collect the HMB kit this year to start participating in HMB academies tournaments for beginners. And 27% of the total number are experienced fighters who also choose HMB academies for their training. HMB academies must have at least one approved and certified HMB instructor. Any HMB fighter willing to become more professional and grow into an HMB instructor one day must think of completing HMB Academy training courses and getting the HMB fighter third category. With further training and passing more tests, you can get an HMB fighter certificate of the second category and first category. The person who passed the HMB fighter certification test can later become an approved instructor after completing HMB Academy training program which was created by the joint efforts of HMB trainers and academy managers. During the course, one will learn correct training methods of all the basic techniques and will get certain sense of training systems for dual and mass categories. After completing the course and getting the HMB Academy certificate, HMB instructors will have the right to prepare HMB athletes and will be added to public registry, which is open to everyone. HMB Academy is constantly working on improving training methods and developing short programs of masterclasses, seminars, demonstration trainings. You can choose among leading HMB instructors who are preparing new fighters and have visible effects of their program's efficiency. In case you want to join the certification program or you want to organize a seminar with approved HMB instructor, send the request to this email. Facing pressing need to protect our intellectual rights and taking into account the requests from the HMB community representatives willing to create their own content based on the footage belonging to the HMB, it was decided to suggest the simple procedure of the content usage agreement signing for HMB bloggers, national organization sources, content managers, and so on. Ten personal agreements with representatives of different countries were signed. Also, one more collaboration agreement was signed with the cable channel Weapon, which has more than 12 million subscribers in Russia, the CIS and Baltic countries, with total audience of 30 million viewers for TV series based on the Battle of the Nations 2019 Life. And one more agreement was signed with the Bullpen Sports Network, which gave us access to the Wave TV audience and for the moment more than 26 million views of the HMB videos on their platforms. Please bear in mind that being a national organization doesn't mean you have the right on the content downloaded on HMB official pages. In case you want to use it, you'll have to sign the additional content usage agreement. And I kindly recommend you to follow the HMBA brand's identity policy that you can also find on the official website. Press accreditation is obligatory for work at the Battle of the Nations 2021 for representatives of any media. National team support members who also want to take pictures using professional equipment and in the closed for visitors areas, such as, for example, historical camp or the safety zone, also need to apply for accreditation. Taking into account the increasing number of individuals and media representatives willing to film the event, it was decided to adopt a tighter media representative access policy. System of preliminary agreements will be mandatory for all participants. No foreign media with professional film equipment will be allowed without a prior content license agreement. Who would have thought a few years ago that each country would have its own national representative responsible for the development of HMB sports among women? And today it is a reality. Already 34 countries have joined the project to form the dedicated structural unit HMB Women. 
It's an honor to work with these amazing ladies and after a certain time of discussion with representatives of various countries trying to analyze their local situations, discussing solutions and making plans for the future, an information strategy was created aiming to popularize HMB among women, as well as support the existing female community codenamed She Fights. It is a set of activities aimed at influencing the female audience in the context of the project and the slogan, we take into account the role of all women in the movement. In general, since many of them are marshals, supporters, artisans, doctors, etc. It covers primarily the fighters, but doesn't focus on them. The project is long-term, moving to the type of certain content on an ongoing basis. This campaign will be started with a short video that was already presented to the HMBA Women National Representatives and strongly supported by them. Moreover, we are so happy that national representatives have already started to implement she fight strategy on the local level, as for example, Krista Hasan Martin from South Africa and her training sessions for women, and as a hero for the poster was chosen the Russian champion Alexandra Soloshenko. Amazing collaboration, isn't it? Girl power, what can I say? In my time, you'd all be burned at the stake. With the expanding growth of the HMB sport and the whole HMB movement, and considering a new approach to work with national federations, local leagues, Bhut league clubs and teams, it seems clear that there is a need for a greater coordination regarding international capabilities to deal with the exchange of information. That's why the review of the working methods of the Communication Committee was proposed. The main task of the Communication Committee is to enhance communication between the HMBA executives and members and among members to support the association's mission. As it is not possible to maintain the information spread and exchange efficiently without being involved in it on a local level, it was decided to split the information field into conferences according in by analogy with Buhut League divisions. New communication committee work key elements would also include the goal of close interaction between Buhut League managers and communication committee officers based on a comprehensive and efficient strategy aimed at resolving specific problems, including events advertising, registered teams promotion, events review and news exchange. Each conference will have two official HMBA communication officers, more for Europe up to six, which makes 14 to 16 persons in total that will be united as the Communication Committee Council. In the beginning, while the structure and process are being built, it will be organized by the HMBA office, by the next General Assembly or after Battle of the Nations 2021, the proposal is to choose a new head of the committee among these conference officers, who will take the lead in coordinating the committee's work. The conference leaders will be provided with a bonus system that includes trips to the most important events within the conference and trips to the Battle of the Nations. The tasks of the conference leaders will be discussed with the candidates. And, of course, the main priority for the next year is the promotion of the 11th World Championship Battle of the Nations that takes place from 1st till 4th July in Orada Fortress, Romania. We are glad to share with you some information about the venue and conditions and can assure that the place is excellent for organizing Battle of the Nations and meets all their requirements. The fortress itself is really huge, with a total area exceeding 150,000 square meters. It's a constantly developing place and the local authorities pay a lot of attention to the renovation and preservation of the fortress. On its territory there are two museums, conference areas and spaces, craft interactive sites, a hotel, three restaurants, vast and flat open fields that are perfect for lists and camps. In addition, there are two prepared amphitheaters with seats for visitors and the ability to mount lists for dual categories. Now my turn has finally come! I'm really sorry, but 
Who are you? I am that part of your conscious that defends historical aspect in everything you do. Just let me step in front from time to time. Some people would call that prof deformation. And others insanity. But please, please let me do it. I know this fortress. Oh well, fine. Or the fortress of Varadinum, as I used to know it, is one of the most important late medieval architectural monuments found in Transylvania. Now you know it as a part of Romania. It is the place where the city's history can be truly felt and revived. One of the many things that make the fortress unique is the fact that the first astronomical observatory in medieval Europe was situated here. Georg von Poerbach worked at the observatory of Varadinum, using it as the reference of prime meridian of the Earth in his Tabula Varadiensis, published in 1464. Orada was used for maps and navigation as the prime meridian between 1464 and 1677. In his logbook, Columbus stated he had one copy of Tabula Varadiensis on board to calculate the actual meridian based on the position of the Moon in correlation to Orada. Amerigo Vespucci also recalled how he acquired the knowledge to calculate meridians by means of these tables. Did that mean America was discovered thanks to Arada? Another thing that makes this fortress unique is the fact that five kings and two queens were buried here. Ladislaw I, the founder of the fortress and the city, Stephen II, Andrew II, who was the only Hungarian king to undertake a crusade in the Holy Land, the Fifth Crusade, Ladislaw IV, Queen Beatrice, who was the wife of Carl Robert of Anjou, Queen Mary of Anjou, and Holy Roman Emperor, and the King of Hungary, Croatia, Bohemia, and Germany, Sigismund of Luxembourg, who was also the founder of the Knightly Order of Dragon. The fortress has an old and vast history of almost 1,000 years. What an incredible place for organizing Battle of the Nations indeed! The concept of the main arena location is pretty similar to one we had at the previous World Championship in Serbia. The main difference is the fact that tribunes for the audience are planned for mountain on a hill, and one of the main arena borders is a solid stone wall. For the moment, it is planned to proceed with the same plan of the three lists building next to each other for 5 vs 5 category, with a sand surface. There will be small tribunes for the fans and participants, commentary books. In the gap between these sides and the walls of the fortress, we are planning the fighters' rest area. So, almost the same picture as in Serbia. As usual, it is planned to organize a large historical camp for participants. This year, it's possible to place it pretty close to the main arena. And, due to its dislocation, it will be completely closed for the event visitors. On the one side of the camp, there is a separate entrance for the participants' cars which is also close to some nearest shops and a big local market. Toilets and showers for participants will be located on the camp territory. Following the previous Battle of the Nations experience, the modern touristic camp is also planned. As usual, participants from overseas countries will be provided with tents and furniture so they can stay in the historical camp. All participants will be provided with hay, firewood and water. Also, the small returnable fee for all participants living in the camps will be kept. Apart from some basic conditions that are available for all participants, there is a possibility to get some extra options, such as additional showers or toilets for the team. Teams from Europe can rent tents and furniture for the historical camp. Also, there is an option to pre-order food in the restaurants of the fortress. The exact prices for all these options we will give you later. Unfortunately, it is necessary to keep in mind possible additional requirements due to the restrictions caused by the COVID-19. First of all, it is recommended that you buy returnable tickets. Next, follow the official sources for the relevant information concerning the PCR test requirements.
For the moment, the necessity and validation time varies depending on the country. Also, it is possible that you will have to take one more test after arrival in Romania, which will cost from 30 to 40 euros. All the current requirements will be provided in advance. So, despite the fact that General Assembly 2020 was held online, it was not less efficient as usual. We are proud of the joint efforts of the HMBA officials, organization team and General Assembly participants. You all are just amazing. We'll see you soon. Keep safe. Until next time, bye-bye.